was made uh, by the university to suspend me uh, after a podcast that happened that asked me about my field of expertise. Let me remind you, I'm a scholar that studies state crime. I'm a scholar that studies genocide. I'm a scholar that really looks at the mundane, at the effect of what goes on, and that studies anti-racism from a feminist uh, perspective. So what happened is that I uh, actually the letter was publicized before I, I read it, and nobody have contacted me. And this is not the first time that the Hebrew University um, you know, publicized it. They did it in October when I said that what is happening in Gaza is a genocide. Of course, two months afterward, the ICJ is looking at it. And they even issued uh, provisional measures uh, against the state of Israel. But I also need to remind us all that uh, the academic space is a space that's supposed to be a space whereby we share our ideas, the multiplicity of ideas. And then the Hebrew University is sending me a letter saying, telling me that this academic institution, which is the Hebrew University, is a Zionist institution, which means if my narrative is an anti-Zionist and my narrative is a clearly anti-Zionist, I am, and I am calling for abolishing Zionism because I see it as very violent towards the people and as causing uh, criminalities, and therefore I look at state criminality. Uh, and uh, the fact that the university is not only sending me a letter, it's uh, uh, the dean of the School of Social Work actually called my students and he told them in a very forceful full manner that I'm out, that I have no place at the Hebrew University, which was my academic institution for the past 30 years. This is a place where I taught where I did the research. The question remains whether what is teachable, what is um, what should be written, what is uh, publishable, what is what we can speak as scholars that are studying state criminality as opposing to what is going on, as opposing to what the state is doing is uh, not accepted, so they throw us out of the university. And this is the same policy that that the state of Israel is doing um, outside. So it's silencing, it's preventing people from speaking, it's threatening, it's punishing. And it's also done in a very degraded and indignifying manner, calling my student a day before the end of the first semester and telling me you're suspended is something that is beyond any expectations. But this is, uh, an, and stressing, it's a Zionist institution, you can't abide by these rules year out. My only concern, Amy, today is the safety of students, uh, the safety of my, uh, of, of my students, uh, Jewish, Jewish and Palestinian, that are standing against genocide, standing against the war, refusing to see the continuous and ongoing atrocities. My really concern is the silencing of dissent all over the world, because we see it in academic institutions. The question, if we think that academic institutions should work according and by the orders from the state, I don't know why we're having academic institutions. Academia and research requires that we're attentive to details, to what goes on, to the life of, of women, men, children. And I'm really concerned today. And of course, I must clearly uh, state that the behavior of the university is a behavior that is threatening the safety of our students, the safety of uh, colleagues that are speaking against the genocide, and my own personal safety as a person who lives in Jerusalem and the safety of my family. Professor, can you tell us what you mean by your call for abolishing Zionism? Yes. Well, I see that the Zionist entity started by displacing people, by causing major harms, by massacres that were uh, documented by historians, by sociologists, by political scientists and international relations. I see Zionism that have used the law and ruled by law and not the rule of law. I've seen the, uh, the Zionists causing major harm since 1948, since the Palestinian Nakba, in relation to what goes on. And it's not only my position, the position of many scholars that see it, see and uh, see Zionism as a very racialized and racist uh, ideology that is about the life and livability of one group and the exclusion 
and the marginalization and death of the other group. I think we can definitely live together without the Zionist ideology if we, will, we can talk more in terms and in concepts of justice, of equality, of fairness, of multiplicity of ideas, and not using one ideology to claim that we are here and the rest should be excluded. And I think, uh, Amy, you see it today clearly in Gaza, what is going on today in Gaza when, when babies are dying decomposed in incubators, and I write about unchilding, I write about the attacks on children, I write about the attacks on communities, what we see in Gaza, turning it into a collective grave, is really very t telling. It's really the culmination of a very, very, very violent uh, ideology. So I guess it's time to reconsider the Zionist ideology, because it started since the early 90s with violence, with dispossession, and with lots of massacres, and to call for a discussion that is away from that very, ra very racist and very uh, unfair and, uh, you know, an unhumane ideology.